So first thing first, obviously we have to get some pastries because we don't want to waste calories for big brunch. So we're gonna go like pastry hunting, and we are currently at uh, Bakemono. Ba Bakemono. I don't know baked mono or Bakemono, but it's a Japanese pastry. It smells really good. It's like butter smell, and you can see there people are making it so good. Melbourne's famous for all the hidden alleyways gems, right? Yeah. So one of them that. Uh, a lot of our friends told us to try is Bakemono here. So it's this Japanese uh, patisserie bakery house. It's very small. Everything you can see, everything's being made fresh there. You know, everything like that. Like, oh my god, it's, it's I want to try the melon pan. Yeah, unfortunately, the melon pan's not available. So yeah. we're always, you know, we have a soft spot for melon pan. Yeah. Everywhere we go, we always look for it because we love it from Japan and usually. In the middle, when it's hot, they put like vanilla ice cream. Oh Unbelievable. But right now, what I got is the blueberry and custard um, Danish here, sprinkled with, I guess, sugar icing on the top there, and all the custard must be inside. And then you can see all that fresh blueberry right there. You can see all the custard underneath there. We're just gonna try to break it apart. This is too hard. Maybe I'll just eat it. Oh. That is just a layer, layer of flakiness right there. The blueberry is definitely fresh there, but underneath you've got a bit of a jam there and a bit of that uh, custard as well. So it's quite a big filling, and you know, like layers of that um, fill of pastry just underneath there. But yeah, it's tough there, chewy, nice, you know, like a good bite there. It's not airy, but it's really padded perfectly. You can see inside there. This is really good pastry, like this one is super flaky, the custard is not too sweet and overpowering, so it's really nice. And the jam, the blueberry jam right there is also really good. So combination of everything is really good. Like even the crumbs here, it's so good. You can literally just take the crumbs and eat it. Alright, so I've been speaking about 5 minutes and realized Nick forgot to turn on the microphone. So. I already eat it, but I anyway, it. this is the yuzu almond croissant and look at this, it's like a hair, someone's hair. I already bite it and wow. Yeah, look at that, it's look all spread that. all underneath. Yeah. So the pastry again is like very nice, very flaky, but as soon as you bite this one, you can taste the yuzu. It's not really strong though, so I'm not a fan of very strong yuzu, so this is perfect. If you hate yuzu, maybe not this one, but it's really really good though. It's like refreshing, almondy, um, custody kind of pastry. We are currently at South Melbourne Market. We are accompanied by locals, which is Peter and Oni from Two Hungry Diners. That's right. So, Oni. Oni. the best person to um, ask about Melbourne and to watch about Melbourne yeah. food yeah. is these guys. <laughs> Melbourne is famous for its coffee and brunch culture. So, patisseries are definitely an offering you cannot miss here. So apparently Oni says the pandan plant is nice. My favorite actually. <laughs> yeah, so we got two pandan. I mean, they have like a matcha, croissant, what else? Oh, yeah. um, no, no, it's not matcha, mocha and plain. But i never seen pandan croissant before. So I was like, yes. I am destroying a masterpiece. So the pandan flavor is like very subtle, it's not very overpowering and the, like the pastry is really nice, it's a bit oily though, <laughs> but yeah, it's actually very nice. I thought it's gonna be like super strong pandan yeah, flavor, no. <laughs> but it's not, it's just like a very subtle flavor, it's nice. So this is the pandan flan. And yeah, if you love pandan flavor and you prefer stronger pandan flavor, get this one because the flan, which is like the custard, it's like custardy pandan, it's really nice and the pastry is basically the same. So yeah, really good. So the next place that we're gonna go to is called Bore. Bore. For Bore. For Bore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For 
pretty much. So it's like a Middle Eastern kind of pie here, and it's like a rectangle shape there. And this one we got is uh, the lamb inside, spicy lamb. Yeah. Oh, you can see all that smoke coming out. It's still piping hot. Peter, Peter's got uh, the chicken and mushroom one. Yeah. Apparently, it's pretty new that one. Yeah, we haven't tried this before. Oh, that smell! That is. So you got like chopped onions inside as well, and all that spicy lamb, the herbs and spices. I'm gonna try mine as well. So very oniony. You got a lot of onion there. The, the is it lamb. Gamey? No, actually, the lamb's not gamey at all. It's actually really nice and tender. Yeah, it's like a like almost like a mincemeat. This one is so plastic, really nice as well. Chicken and mushroom, can't go wrong. So yeah. that's, that's $4.50 right there. $4.50. As you can see, the fillings are not so much of the lamb. Uh, more onion, I think. But yeah, it's not gamey at all. It's pretty nice. I wish it's more. Alright, this is really funny. This is the first time I've ever seen where there is a dim sim meal. Peter's been bragging about this place for a while now. Well, since we got here, the pork steamed once, and then we also have the chicken that's steamed, and then we got the fried version of the pork and also the chicken. So much meat! Yeah, so much meat, and I guess the pork is, is mashed, kind of minced there into really fine pieces of meat there and then it, there's so much pepper inside as well you can really taste that pepper yeah yeah, yeah. It's a huge <laughs> amount of pepper that is just insane it's so much filling that's why it's 450. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fried one so i got the pork one and only got the chicken one let's try this cheers, cheers. so i tried the same one and also this one. The filling is exactly the same, but I think the fried one is better. Yep. Yeah, it's much better. And then obviously you need the chili, so. Much better. So in terms of the skin, it's not your typical uh, soft skin layer kind of dim sim, but it's sort of a um, thicker, thicker, thicker one. Yeah. It's almost 3.30 and we are back here in the hotel. It's Moven Pick and we're bringing Oni and uh, Peter here. He's setting up the chocolate, right? Yep. Oh, look at this. This is it. This is what we're waiting for. Three, it's almost 3.30 now. So every day in Moven Pick, they got a chocolate hour session. Where for exactly an hour as an in-house guest, you get unlimited chocolate dessert. So we had to make sure that we're there at that hour. I mean, who says no to unlimited dessert, right? So All right. everything is chocolate, I guess. They can't do ice cream because it's gonna melt. But this is like free flow. So if it's like run out, they just keep topping up until one hour. So apparently, if you have a kid less than 12 years old, you can get free ice cream. Maybe I can pretend to be um, 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they apparently have macaroons now. Macaroons and this yeah. one as well. Oh my so God. I guess if you wait, about 15 minutes, it gets better. Yeah, that one maybe just on trade. Yeah, maybe just on trade. This, yeah. is, this is, this is kind of like dessert that we love. Like all this um, little candy, little chocolate here, yeah. the macaroons. Apparently, macaroons. tell me this that. This one is good. Ooh, it's so soft. Look at that. Yeah. Try it. Mm. Nice, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. As the sun sets in Melbourne, we headed down to Emporium with our friends. Procalia, a Japanese fusion spot. Oh wow, so downstairs they got ramen. Ichiran, look at that. It's like arts and craft. But yeah, the snack, look at that. Yeah, so here you go. Oh, we have Regina, Regina. Raymond and Regina. So yeah, tonight we're just gonna have a little dinner. And then dessert. Davina's got the mapu tofu mm -hmm. and the roast latte. Kami's got the eburi salmon. Yeah. I got the sukiyaki bowl. And Reg got the eburi salmon as well. Sukiyaki. Sukiyaki. Beautiful. All 
Alright, so today's our last day and we are yeah. currently queuing in front of a loon. Like mm -hmm. the queue is like ridiculous. Apparently, well, we've tried before and this is like the best croissant in the world. So they say, right? So yeah. I know, we, we, I think when we tried it, it was um, at Fitzroy. Fitzroy wine, yeah. but this one is in the city. Now, while waiting, because we were waiting for what, 45 minutes? Yeah. I actually got a coffee from, from Puzzle. Puzzle. And the good thing about this one is that this cup is edible, mm. so you can eat like completely eat the cup. Yeah. Because it's from the oats and grains. Yeah, look at that. That's that's kind of yeah. awesome, right? Try it, Helmy. Uh, well, it's already eaten. Half eaten. <laughs> mm. But it's extra three dollars. Quite expensive. And this one for next normal one. All right, so after like 45 minutes in the queue, we're finally inside. It's a, a this is the patisserie in Russell Street. Usually we go to the Fitzroy one, but today uh, we didn't feel like traveling too long. This is a plain croissant, I think six dollars twenty, and this one is the almond croissant. It's ten dollars now. Wow, look at that. So sugar icing, a pack full of almond there. Yeah. So apparently one of them. Well, I can feel how flaky that is. Yeah. Oh my god, you're destroying it. Yeah, wow, it. look at how flaky that is. Look at that inside. Oh, yeah. mm. crazy. It's an incredible combination of flavor at the top. You got all the almond, you know, tossed in a little bit of sugar icing, and then right underneath that, a crispy pastry. And then Inside you got the frangipan, so a mix of like sugar, icing, a uh, bit of eggs and a lot of other combi combination but it's very buttery, it's, it's just hella perfection, yeah. You know when you hear about Loon being one of the best in Melbourne, sometimes you think it's kind of overrated but it's actually really, really wonderful. We've eaten three croissants today, uh, I mean in this Melbourne trip. Yep. I mean, bakemono is for the Japanese fusion, so it's more like yuzu amen. Whereas um, I got is like pandan as well. So, but it's it's different. This one is like the real, say, French croissant. This one, like, uh, yeah. Like no wonder people queue for an hour for this. It's good. <laughs> So we got a couple of hours before our next food spot and then we're off to the airport. So sad, so sad. I wish we can stay longer here in Melbourne. We're now in Emporium because uh, one of our friend, Tina, she went to Fortress Melbourne. So we're gonna check out Fortress Melbourne. Apparently it's like a like a gamer's dream place. So Yeah, it's your dream Yeah, it's place. my dream. <laughs> I should be living here, you know? <laughs> Alright, let's check it out. Seriously, I don't even want to go back to Sydney. This place is incredible. It's like everything I've ever dreamed of growing <laughs> up. It's got like land gaming, they got board games, they got arcades and streamer pot and deck and then they got yeah. a competition upstairs. It's just incredible. They've got a bar, you know, you can watch sports here. Like, oh my God, it's just incredible. Like, it's like this is a, a World of Warcraft. Heaven. That's right. In yeah. this particular area, it's like a World of Warcraft tavern. Like. Like they've got the elves, you know, the orcs and stuff like that. It's just incredible, man. Yeah, this is yeah, yeah. This is so you are surreal. you are basically staying here, right? Bye. Yeah, yeah. I want to stay here. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. It's like such a high tech computer gear. Like, oh my god, man, all you can dream of. Like, it's right here. It's just incredible just to wander around and. He is basically speechless. Guy. Yeah, I'm speechless. Yeah. So I'm mind blown right now. This place is amazing. Yeah. So our last stop before the airport is Tori Song. It's a Japanese restaurant that one of our friend Ray has recommended us definitely have to book and it's in an area called Carlton. Um, it's just about five minute walk from the Victoria Market which is amazing by the way. We went to the Victoria Market and there was so much street food. We actually can't wait to go back and do a full episode there. Tori Song is a Japanese restaurant that offers a teishoku meal. It's a type of Japanese set meal, where all of the dishes in the course are served together as a set. And it usually includes a main, soup, rice, and in this case, dessert too. There's a lot to choose from, so I don't even know where to start, but yes. So it's like a set meal, a teishoku here. I've got like the pork ribs here, 
which has a little bit of togarashi as well, some teriyaki sauce. The pork ribs there is very, very tender. Really easy to kind of bite it off the bones there. The teriyaki sauce is just a great compliment. The sweetness, the stickiness. But yeah, I um, love that little bit of that togarashi on top as well. So that gives you a little bit of a contrast of a spicier kind of hit. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I love actually getting that egg yolk into my um, pork ribs there. Wow, look at that. That's literally the way to go. You get that creaminess of that egg and then pair with that sweetness and stickiness of that teriyaki sauce and the tenderness of that meat. It's really, really good. Mm. The best. The reason why we put the beef inside, you know, the egg yolk, the onsen egg, because this onsen egg will give you the creaminess, sweetness, and it's just caught well with the beef. Yes. Like if you never try sukiyaki, man, you are missing out. <laughs> so we literally demolish everything. Look at this. It's so clear and obviously dessert. That's red bean, yeah, matcha cheesecake with biscuits. Pretty good, very dense, but not too sweet though. So yeah, it's pretty nice. All right, so that ends our Melbourne trip here. Uh, it was a uh, kind of fun four days here in Melbourne. So I hope you guys enjoy exploring Melbourne with us, and don't forget to punch the like button, and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Ciao.